Jet engines generate a lot of power, so how can we use some of that power to run other systems on board the aircraft? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the seventh class in the AGK series. Today we're going to be having a look at jet engine ancillary systems. This is very similar to the class on piston engine ancillary systems. You'll see some of the systems are essential for running the engine itself, whereas some of them are extra things that we chuck onto the side of the engine in order to help the aircraft run a bit more smoothly. The first system that we're going to look at today isn't really an ancillary system, but it is an extra system or feature that a lot of jet engines have. This is known as reverse thrust. Reverse thrust is used to redirect the flow of air coming out the back of the engine and therefore the thrust direction also changes. This helps the aircraft to slow down on landing or in the case of a rejected takeoff. This system will only be enabled when on the ground and with regular thrust at idle. To prevent unintended activation, the thrust levers will have automatic locks in place which don't unlock until the aircraft senses it is on the ground through something called a weight on wheel switch, as well as the engine being at forward idle RPM. Reverse thrust can be used from a reverse idle setting up to a max reverse thrust setting. So it has a range of selections we can use, but generally we either use reverse idle or reverse max. And reverse max isn't the same as forward max, it's only about 40% of the value of maximum forward thrust. The way the system of reverse thrust and redirecting the gases works is done by using bucket doors or clamshells. And this allows for a large change in angle of around 120 degrees simply by blocking off the airflow and changing the direction it flows. It can't be as much as 180 degrees because this would mean that the hot exhaust gases start to travel back through the engine the wrong way. And this can cause the engine to break as it isn't designed for the gases to go that way through the engine. So about 120 degrees of angle ensures a bit of reverse thrust, but also a method of redirecting the hot exhaust air away from the engine. With modern high bypass engines, normally only the low pressure air is redirected via a clamshell door system. It is essentially an easier system to implement as you only need to block off this section of air instead of the whole uh, core of air as well. And this makes the engineering in the system a little bit easier. The bleed system draws compressed air away from the various compressor stages of the engine for use in pressurizing the aircraft and providing air conditioning. And it is also used in engine tasks such as helping to cool down the turbine blades by adding in cooler air to the hot exhaust gases. Bleed air is a very useful uh, source of energy because it has hot high pressure air that we can use to do work in some of the systems that we'll have a look at later on in this course. The main disadvantage of a bleed system and that high pressure air is that we're taking away some of the air that is flowing through the engine, which reduces the mass of air that's flowing through it. And if we reduce the mass of air flowing through it, we reduce the thrust that is produced by this engine. This reduction in thrust can be quite large, so sometimes the bleed system is switched off during times of a flight that we require a lot of thrust, like takeoff, for example. It's sometimes a procedure to switch off the air conditioning system, for example, so that we have no bleed air draining away from the engine to the air conditioning, and therefore we have the maximum amount of thrust that we need for takeoff. One of the main functions of the bleed system is to provide an anti-icing function. The intake of the engine needs to be kept clear of ice. This is so we can ensure a nice, smooth, laminar flow of air through the intake towards the compressor. So we take some of that hot air inside of the compressor and redirect it around the intake of the engine via internal tubes and pipes. And this heats up the surface and prevents any ice from forming. This, however, causes a double hit in terms of thrust generation. First, we take away some of the air flowing through the engine through the bleed system, so that mass of air and, uh, from the, uh, to accelerate sorry, changes and it reduces. And secondly, we heat up the air entering the engine and that reduces its density. Therefore, the mass of air being squeezed through the engine is lower 
which again reduces the mass flow rate and thrust generation. So it's a trade-off between reduced overall thrust and keeping the airflow consistent and preventing um, any engine issues. But anti-icing always has the priority. If you need it, you have to switch it on and take the thrust hit. And if you don't have enough thrust to do the job, then so be it. You want to look after these engines more through the use of anti-ice rather than not having it. The accessory gearbox is used to draw power away from the main shaft of the engine to power various other pumps and systems. Things that run off the accessory gearbox are things like engine driven fuel pumps, oil pumps, hydraulic pumps and a system for generating electricity. The gearbox gets its power through a drive shaft attached to the main shaft of the engine via gears. And usually there's an intermittent, intermittent, sorry, intermediate gearbox in between to redirect and redistribute the rotational force. The accessory gearbox is usually where the starter motor for these engines is attached as well. The starter motor obviously helping to start turn the compressor and the turbine and to get the process started when first powering up these engines. Basically the accessory gearbox is just the method of taking power away from the engine and redirecting it towards other systems as well as that bleed system. So there's basically two ways of drawing power from the engine. You either use the bleed or the accessory gearbox. The oil system lubricates and reduces friction between components while also drawing heat away from those components. The main components that need cooled and lubricated are the bearings that are in the main engine shaft and the accessory gearbox. The type of oil system used is a dry sump system. In this system, oil is drawn up from a reservoir via an engine driven pump, which is run from the accessory gearbox, and it passes through a filter before to remove any contaminants prior to entering the pump mechanism. Then the pump delivers the oil to the components that need it, like the bearings, the accessory gearbox, and the intermediate gearbox via oil nozzles. After the oil has been used for cooling and lubricating these components, it is collected in a sump, which is basically a bucket, and then a scavenge pump, which is again is run off the accessory gearbox, pulls the oil out of this bucket via another filter, and then it starts to send it back towards the reservoir. But before it reaches the reservoir, it goes through a process of cooling that oil back down. And most aircraft these days will use a fuel oil heat exchange. Essentially, the fuel from the wings isn't heated by anything, so it gets quite cold. And we have hot oil in the engine. So we pass the oil through lots of tubes located next to the cold fuel. And this cools down the oil and heats up the fuel. It exchanges the heat between the two. The oil will also have tubes with air passing over them from the outside, which is known as ram air, which also helps to cool the oil back down before it enters into the reservoir and the whole process starts again. The engine fuel system delivers the correct amount of fuel at the correct pressure under all flight conditions, and the fuel system is normally fully automatic. The components involved in the engine fuel system are an engine-driven high-pressure fuel pump, an emergency shutoff valve, a fuel control unit, and a smaller low-pressure pump to suck fuel from the wing tanks, which is normally electrically powered, and then of course the fuel nozzles that actually spray the fuel into the combustion chamber. The valves and the pumps are pretty self-explanatory, so let's talk about the fuel control unit. Basically, the thrust lever will command more power and a fuel control unit will decide how much fuel to send to the combustion chamber to achieve an optimum burn and that required power or desired power. It does this depending on the air inlet temperature, the pressure, the engine RPM, the exhaust gas temperature and thrust lever angle or position. And through careful monitoring of all these parameters, the fuel control unit will know exactly the right amount of fuel to command the high pressure pump to spray in and achieve the desired thrust output. The FCU is a complicated hydromechanical system which has been upgraded in almost all modern aircraft to a FADEX system, which stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control. FADEX is a digital control system that performs complete engine management. It converts a lot of the mechanical and environmental measurements from the engine into electric signals that are then processed by an electronic engine controller, which will then send commands to a fuel metering unit, which controls the amount of fuel sprayed into the engine 
to achieve the desired effect while keeping all of the parameters within limits. Fadec normally has two channel redundancy with one channel active and one in standby. If one channel fails, then the other takes over automatically and each engine will have its own FADEX system with an independent power supply so that it even works when the main power source fails for some reason. To create AC electricity for use in the aircraft, we use a generator attached to a device called a constant speed drive. A constant speed drive will do exactly what it says on the tin. It will spin at a constant speed. It is a hydromechanical device that runs off of the accessory gearbox and the problem that this device solves is to do with the engine rotating at a range of speeds. Basically high RPM during takeoff, low RPM when doing a low thrust descent. And if we just connected a generator straight to the gearbox, we would find that the frequency of the electricity generated would vary as well in line with the RPM of the engine. This isn't good. We want a constant frequency for the electricity in the aircraft. So the constant speed drive alters and takes the input rotation from the engine and alters the output torque to achieve a constant output rotation. It's kind of like applying the brakes to slow down the rotation or letting the engine freewheel in order to achieve a constant output. How the generator works is a bit technical for this class, so I'm going to leave that for when I make a video on AC electrics. These two components are often combined into something called an integrated drive generator, or an IDG for short, which achieves the same effect, but it's all done in one unit. So it has a smaller profile and it is therefore a bit more common on newer aircraft. To summarize then, reverse thrust is a system that redirects the flow of the exhaust gases by about 120 degrees to achieve about 40% the value of uh, maximum forward thrust and it's active on the ground only, therefore making it useful for landing and rejecting takeoffs. The bleed system draws hot, high pressure air away from the compressor stage of the engine for use in other aircraft functions. It's one source of power that we have with the accessory gearbox being the other source of power. The bleed air can be used to run the aircraft's air conditioning system and pressurization system. It can also be used for internal engine cooling, like in the turbine section where all the exhaust gases are very, very hot. But the um, most interesting function, I think, is the anti-ice system. We draw hot air away from the compressor and then circulate it around the inlet of the engine to prevent any ice buildup. Ice buildup being negative because it can affect the laminar flow of air into the inlet and the compressor of the engine. The accessory gearbox is that other method of drawing away power. It uses a system of gears and shafts and sometimes an intermediate gearbox. And the accessory gearbox can run mechanical things like pumps. And we can also attach it to a constant speed drive to generate electricity. The oil system in a jet engine is a dry sump system. We have a reservoir and an engine driven pump with a filter. This engine driven pump sucks the fuel up, delivers it to the components that need it. The sump collects all the hot and used up oil. And then a scavenge pump will suck all that fuel out of the, uh, out of the sump, sorry. And then before it returns to the reservoir, it goes through a fuel oil heat exchange to cool the oil back down to reasonable temperatures, whilst also having the benefit of heating up the fuel slightly. Fuel in the engine is usually controlled by a FADEX system, which will have redundancy and its own power supply. It will control high pressure pumps and valves to ensure that the correct amount of fuel is delivered to the combustion chamber under a range of pressures and temperatures and RPMs so that the optimum ratio of fuel and air is achieved to basically get the best burn out of the fuel. Electricity is generated via a constant speed drive and a generator or combined into a integrated drive generator. The constant speed drive ensures a consistent speed of rotation goes into the generator through a range of engine rotation speeds and this ensures, this ensures a constant output frequency from the generator which is ideal for running all the other aircraft systems off.